Welcome back, Brick Maniacs. We're here at the designer's desk of Landon, and we're taking a look at our first minifig of the month, the US 82nd Airborne, which, fittingly enough, I believe, was the United States military first airborne division, and now our first minifig of the month. So, check this out. Well planned, man. Yeah. Um, Man, where do I start on this guy? We've done the we've done the 101st Airborne. Right. Let's talk about the helmet too. Sure. I, and I know that we'll get into the color shifting and stuff from there, but let's just go top to bottom. Okay. Cool. Um, helmet first. Um, M1 steel pot helmet, and this is actually they would use British uh, netting for oh. if, I, if I have my uh, information correct. Uh, early on, they would use, or, yeah during this time they would use British netting um, on their helmet. The Airborne guys would a lot. I guess they had probably better access to that at the time. Uh, and then that's some scrimmage, I believe, is what that's called, uh, attached to that, mm -hmm. and. And uh, that's just, you know, it's to break up that silhouette of that helmet um, and just to kind of blend in with their environment better. Um, there, I've been playing around a little bit with the artwork on that, the simulated netting in the background there. Um, it's, a, it's a lot more, uh, it, it's, a, it's more uh, detailed than I think I have done in the past, but it's, it's a, I'm slowly refining it to uh, get it just right. So sure. I'm happy with how that's turned out. Uh, below that we have uh, his face, obviously, and um, that is camouflaged out as well. Just again, more field applied, just. These guys were just, you know, dirty, right? Yeah, doing whatever it took yeah. to make it work. Uh, uh, I don't know if they're using grease or what, what exactly it is to get to get that, uh, you know. There's probably a variety of things depending on what they can get their hands on, huh? If mud. Yeah, mud. If you're working. <laughs> Makeup. On. No, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Going down, you have the, I believe it's the M1 bandolier, go figure. Yeah, um, everything's M1. Yeah, and that's to hold uh, more clips for your grand or whatever. Uh, other, I think I think the uh, uh, M1 carbine would also work in that as sure. well, but I, you know, um, yeah. So just more ammo, so he's uh, he's decked out with more ammo. Um, he's wearing a scarf uh, uh, right there, and that's actually, um, the camouflage is from a parachute is what they oh, would have come from. So, um, yeah, so they'd, they'd tear up, they'd cut up parachutes and use them as scarves and whatever, you know. You gotta have like style that. just because you're on the front yeah, line. Exactly, so come on. exactly. Uh, US flag on the side of the arm there, and I have a uh, updated Riggers ammo pouch there. So those were made um, kind of at the forward operating base kind of place and uh, by the Riggers. And um, so that's just an ammo pouch that's designed to hold as, as many clips or magazines uh, as, as they can cram in there. And that's, they have these push button, push dot snaps. Uh, and those were sometimes in short supply. So this one I actually have a, just a, a, a string to uh, tie that close. That's an interesting detail that no I saw No kidding. There. Yeah. Um, 82nd Airborne uh, patch, and he's got that watch there as well. Um, you might notice the camouflage scheme that's kind of a bit different from the 101st Airborne. Um, that again, they would just take their regular uh, parachute uh, uniform, or their um, paratrooper uniform, and that's just kind of field applied, um, I mean, you know, green paint pretty much. Sure. Um, again, to break up that silhouette. Um, this is uh, something prior to D-Day, they uh, would take these parachute, paratrooper uniforms and they would reinforce the pockets and the elbows and the knees, um, but they didn't get around to everybody always. So there's uh, a good handful of pictures I saw where they just had the plain uniform that was unreinforced. Um, and so this is the one that I chose to make for this one just because you're getting that extra, that gave me a chance to do more camouflage uh, sure. on this guy. Um, also along with that camouflage, he's actually been color shifted. So you might notice the ground that he's on is dark tan. Um, that's actually the base color for this minifigure, but you might notice that it's a little bit more olive compared to that. So we're actually shifting that color uh, closer to that historically accurate, um, s like slightly olive color of that uniform. Which oh, is kind man. of a new thing for you to be yeah, working we're, with the color of the figure mm -hmm. itself to then change that to be right. something even more accurate. And I will say this, I mean, as far as olive goes, and then, you know, it's broken up with the gear and stuff like that, but it, it looks very accurate. Yeah, especially we're, we're really pictures. dialing in that, that actual historically accurate olive color. And this is, this is different than like we're not just painting over a figure, right. printing entirely to get the color we want. This is actually color mixing with the existing Lego, so it's a lot more subtle, um, a clean look on that. On that, and I think, as far as I know, we're the first to really do anything like this. So it's it's been fun to kind of um, once again blaze a trail like that. Yeah, it's, right. It's fun. What a shot! I love doing that. Um, ammo pouch or uh, pistol belt um, decked out with some of the uh, typical gear that you see on this guy. Got a little shovel, flashlight. Yeah. Canteen or something in the back yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, you uh, of course have the pistol holster, um, and that's kind of just slinged around um, his torso like that. And then, oh man, what else? Um, paratrooper boots. Yeah, pair. Yeah, the uh, the signature paratrooper boots. Mm -hmm. uh, those guys were really proud of those boots. They always look awesome. They should be. And they do look, <laughs> they do look awesome. Um, I think that's a that's a nice um, overview of this minifigure. So uh, a lot of fun to design. Again, this is our minifigure of the month. We're gonna try and make. 
um, enough for everybody who wants one to get one. I think up to a thousand copies. Is okay. What we're thinking a little. Um, and so hey, if you want it, this is your month to get it. Uh, and we, we will not be restocking it anytime soon after this month. So now is your chance. Now or never. The first uh, U.S. Paratrooper Division, also one of the first, or the first deployed. They started in North Africa, then they moved up uh, through Sicily. Uh, they were involved in every major conflict from D-Day to the Battle of the Bulge to finally the occupation of Berlin. So a great figure to start with. You yeah. knocked out of the park. Thank you did a you. great job on it. It looks really cool. Like you said, minifig of the month, so it will be available for the month of September. Then after that, who knows? Who knows? All right, very cool. Well, thank you for joining me and, and showing mm -hmm. me over. Uh, make sure to uh, like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for more here.